You know, back in my day, video games were fun to play. You didn't have any of this live service, microtransactions, season pass, DLC, all this mumbo jumbo pay to win mechanics and our full price $60 games. Back in the day, $60 games, they came with everything. Alright, now I'm sorry for that horrible, horrible way of acting like an old man. No, I think that's how I actually act like when I'm old. But anyways, thanks for coming to this video. Excuse the dirty room. Say hello to the puppy. Puppy doesn't care. And I hope you don't beat me up too much for this video because this is just an old man talking about how gaming used to be versus how it is now. In particular, I will be talking about RPG games. Now, for references on my old school RPG games being better than new RPG games, if you can even call them RPG games, really, I will be using old games like Mass Effect 1 and 2, a little bit of 3, KOTOR, you know, all the great classics, the, all the best of the best of the RPG games that we've played back in the old days. Some of you kids won't understand that. Some of you kids won't ever know about it because you never grew up with it. But it feels kind of sad to me that a lot of kids these days are growing up with games that pretty much always have DLC, season passes, microtransactions, pay to win mechanics, loot boxes, and all that jazz. And it's becoming a norm. And it's very sad to me. And I just really want to bring awareness back to how gaming particularly with rpg games used to be back in the day and how great they were versus how they are now because rpg games nowadays are not the same as the old days and a lot of people will agree to me for the worse now like i said i'll be using old rpg games such as kotor dragon age mass effect maybe a little bit of fallout and fable for references if i even talk about them at all if i even remember not very good at writing scripts i'm just you know that kind of guy that goes off the top of my head with these subjects and talks that i want to talk to people about i want to open up a dialogue with people to hopefully you know bring awareness and get people talking about this and maybe hopefully fingers crossed create a change in the gaming industry now i know the likelihood of that is very slim to none probably heavily leading on none but you know nonetheless i just want to get this out there and talk to you guys about this and see what you think about this if you have other ideas or thoughts or whatever make sure you tell me down below in the comment section so we can have a discussion about this you know i'm interested to see what younger kids these days have to say kind of um it's kind of hard to take them seriously when they probably didn't play any of these old rpg games but i'll still listen i'll still talk and you know maybe some of the older people that are around my age dare i say in the late 20s like me what you guys think about this state of gaming nowadays with rpgs anyways now that we're done with all that let's get started so first off i wanted to get started with talking about how rpgs nowadays are really just glorified mobile games now i say this because if anybody remembers when mobile games are starting to come up the big thing that started happening were free to play games and in said free to play games there were microtransactions and that's what started this whole mess mobile games with their microtransactions now don't get me wrong i do love me some mobile games i actually probably play more mobile games nowadays than i do actual triple a hardcore console games mostly because i am on the move a lot you know i i'm a student still trying to go to school trying to work trying to do stuff with family i'm on the go a lot and i can't really bring games with me so i play mobile games a lot nowadays unless i can get a good game for my switch because that will be my go-to mobile console but that's all besides the point mobile games started this whole run of microtransactions and with the evolution of microtransactions came loot boxes now first off i just want to continue off with the microtransactions because they seem to have gotten worse and worse over the time and kind of taken a back seat to loot boxes because of how loot boxes is essentially gambling you know other places have ruled it as gambling and i'll make another video about that at a later time about how loot boxes are gambling and how these hearings and discussions and rulings are probably going to make a huge change in the gaming community besides that though microtransactions have just gotten out of hand and crazy back in the days with rpgs you didn't have microtransactions to help you through the game or give you these boosts or whatever back in the day you had to grind 
for your experience, you had to grind for your resources, you just had to grind, you just had to play the game the way it was intended to be played. Nowadays, with games like Assassin's Creed Odyssey, Devil May Cry 5, or Destiny 2, you can buy experience nowadays. You can skip the whole grind, you can skip everything, be kind of lazy, and just buy the experience. And it's been a big problem lately, especially with game full price games, mind you, like Devil May Cry 5, or Assassin's Creed Odyssey, or even Destiny 2. Although I haven't really heard anything about Destiny 2's issue of buying experience. Well, it's really not buying experience, more of it's more of buying experience boosters, you know, so you can grind a lot faster than normal. It's just a shame that these microtransactions have gotten to this point where you can just buy these shortcuts now. Or, as they've gotten in Destiny 2, you're able to buy shaders. Even though in Destiny 1, you didn't have to buy shaders, you could just unlock the shaders and they were unlimited use, whereas in Destiny 2, once you use a shader, that's it. It's a single use item and it's gone. And once you use it, and say you get a new piece of armor, you change your armor, now that armor is going to be mismatched and not matched your entire armor set. So now you have to use another shader that you want to use to match again. And if you don't have it, you have to go out and try to grind for that shader. It's ridiculous. But, you know, being a great company Activision is, they uh, let Bungie give you the option to buy your shaders. How great is that? Yeah, that's just beautiful. Gaming has been just decreasing in value more and more. Because, you know, it's not like Destiny has made a bunch of money for them or anything. That they just really need to pinch pennies and now make you buy shaders. Or, or how Assassin's Creed now has to make you buy... Exp well, they don't make you, but I'm sure it's heavily pushed for you to buy experience. Because, like it or not, nowadays, games are way too grindy at least that's my opinion the games have gotten so grindy to the point where these microtransactions actually seem sorry if you hear the dogs please ignore them but it's gotten to the point where it actually seems like these companies these gaming publishers are pushing you to buy experience boosters experience in general and that's just such a shame you know and you know a lot of publishers will deny the fact that they don't make their games extra grindy for in order to push you to buy microtransactions but unfortunately that seems to be the case especially when you know you have games like shadow of war when they remove their loot boxes from their game they had to rebalance the entire game a fully complete $60 game with an expansion pass and loot boxes that were taken out. They made the game so hard and grindy at the end game, it had to be rebalanced once they removed loot boxes because it essentially became a pay to win mechanic. And that's what it is for these games. Even in Destiny, they were caught not too long ago lowering the amount of experience that you get from doing strikes in a row. That's just crazy. It's like they're just pushing you to want to pay for these experience and this whatever. They just want you to pay extra money and unfortunately even though they say that they don't do that, it's a real thing. I mean even look at Battlefront 2, the game that came out with its loot box microtransactions. That game, once they removed that, they had to rebalance that game too to not make it incredibly grindy to unlock things. RPG games are just not what they used to be. And yes, I know Devil May Cry and uh, Battlefront 2 aren't RPG games, but it's just examples of what these microtransactions do to RPG games, such as Assassin's Creed Odyssey, or even Fallout 76 right now, they're thinking about putting in microtransactions that can be considered pay to win mechanics. It's been rumored they're not out yet, but I mean, the way that these rumors are going and these leaks have been going, it seems like there's going to be pay to win mechanics. And these games are incredibly grindy to push you to pay for those things. And you know, it's like in old RPG classics and great games, they didn't have any of these microtransactions or loot boxes. They didn't have them in Mass Effect, before 3 anyways. They didn't have them in Dragon Age, before Inquisition. And they didn't have them in Fallout, before 76, and not in Skyrim. Also a fun fact, these games, before they started introducing microtransactions, were typically scoring higher ratings 
than when they started introducing microtransactions. Nowadays, you have to find tons of crafting materials, you have to raise your ratings with certain groups of people in order to unlock new crafting items that you can craft, and then maybe you can craft the items when you finally get enough items to craft said item that you wanted, given that at that point it's not under level now, and then you have to start over the grind again, getting these new resources and leveling up your ratings with these groups and trying to get the items to craft these higher tiered items it's just crazy it's like this never ending grind that these companies want to keep you coming back to so you can hopefully buy these microtransactions like in Dragon Age Inquisition you can buy resources this stuff is just crazy to me or even in Destiny 2 you can buy the resources now to well for shaders really you can buy shaders now instead of going out and grinding for them and hoping for a random drop you know waiting for the RNG god to be in your favor now another thing that makes old classic games better than these new RPGs are that most of the old side quests weren't glorified fetch quests like they are now. Back then, side quests had interesting stories and interactions which were usually memorable. I still remember playing KOTOR trying to join a secret league of assassins by trying to secretly assassinate certain targets. Or in Dragon Age Origins, where in a circle of magi you have to try to solve this puzzle by interacting with certain items in a certain order to unlock a special weapon. Or even little ones like in Mass Effect where you can try to get through a certain level. I can't remember the name of the level, but it's a level where people are being controlled by this plant and you can get through it by not killing any of the civilians that were being controlled by said plant or you can kill them all. But it's just these little side things in these old games that makes them so memorable and stand out. Nowadays, it's just fetch quests. You go here, pick up this item or go there and defend this position. One example was getting blankets in Dragon Age Inquisition. I almost turned off the game after doing that quest because I was just so put off by how incredibly lame and boring that quest was. And you know, after that, I did eventually turn off the game and I haven't really finished it since. Uh, I think I got in like 15 hours in the game and I just couldn't do it anymore because the quests was just so incredibly boring. Even in Mass Effect Andromeda, I had to force myself through that game. Uh, I finished that game because it's Mass Effect, but it was really hard and it took me a long time to just push through it because quests are just so boring. They're just glorified fetch quests nowadays. But you know, sometimes even fetch quests can be fun, I will admit. Uh, one of my favorite games, Persona 4 Golden, they have fetch quests, but somehow they make it so it doesn't seem like they're really fetch quests. I don't know if it's because it seems more of like a challenge because as a player you have to go into the dungeon and have to try to find the right enemies and then take out the enemies and hope that you even get the drop. And if not, you have to try to find another similar enemy and hope for another drop for that. I guess there actually seems to be a bit of challenge with that. Not in just, you know, go to this area, take out this enemy and drop it. In Persona, it's random encounter, so you gotta hope that you even run into the enemy, and then you gotta hope the enemy drops it. Whereas in games like Mass Effect, you go to his enemy, you kill him, and it's instantly there. There's no real work into getting items unless you're playing like on insane difficulty, I guess. But even still, you shouldn't have to play on insane difficulty to get the same satisfaction as an old game where the fetch quests just seem better. And you know, back in the day, RPGs also just felt complete back then. Games started out not even having DLC or season passes, believe it or not. The game shipped feeling like a good complete story that felt satisfying all the way until the very end. Well, for the good RPG games anyways. But then DLC started coming, which wasn't entirely bad because at first the game still felt complete. And the DLC just really seemed like big side stories in this game, like Return to Ostagar, or Bring Down the Sky, or even Lair to Shadow Broker, which was one of my favorite DLCs of all time. But then things started feeling cut out, like the Promothean from Ashes or whatever it was called DLC in Mass Effect 3, which was a day one DLC that I believe was on the disc. But they just cut it out, locked it out to make people pay for it. Or how the ending to Azura's Wrath was able to be purchased. An ending of a game was able to be purchased. How crazy have these microtransactions been getting? These DLCs, it's just been getting insane. So these games that are supposed to have a gripping and engaging story are purposely being cut into pieces so they can sell them to you again later for more money. People have also been complaining about how 
today's big games such as Destiny 1 and 2, The Division 1 and 2, and Anthem have seemed to be very lacking in story and content. It's because they're purposely cutting out this content to sell to you again later. Which is... <laughs> This is gaming nowadays, people. This sucks. I don't want this video to go on for too much longer, so I think it's a good time to end here. Plus, these dogs are just going nuts downstairs. I'm going to end it here and let you guys remember how old RPG games used to be like before all this microtransaction, DLC, season pass, loot boxes. It's just crazy. Just remember how games used to be before all that craziness. But there are definitely standouts in this current generation consoles that stay true to their roots or as close as true to the roots as they possibly can, such as The Witcher 3, Pokemon, Final Fantasy 15, and Persona 5, which is my favorite game of this generation, to name a few. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Tell me what you think about what I had to say down below about old RPGs versus these new RPG, if you can't see my little quotes that I'm doing with my fingers right now but you know tell me what you think down below about this and if you agree with me or if you disagree with me if you miss the old RPG games or if you didn't even grow up with them if you really want to experience what that life was like not having to spend more money on these games than what you initially paid for them anyways like I said I hope you enjoyed this video consider subscribing to the channel I got some more videos that I'm planning on making as soon as I can get to them Life is busy with school and homework and projects and all that jazz. Anyways, I'll catch you in the next video.